first lived in a backyard cottage or a dadu in the central district and we lived there for six years and we absolutely loved it. Oftentimes you'll hear adu or adu or dadu, d-a-d-u, and what that merely means is that it's an accessory dwelling unit. And then we were looking for um, a place to buy. <laughs> yeah, Bubba. And we couldn't find a place that we was in our budget or that was like walking and transit and biking distance from places. And we considered leaving Seattle. We tried for a year and a half to basically buy the smallest, oldest, basement. least earthquake ready <laughs> basement <laughs> condo imaginable. Um, and every single time that we did and we put in an offer, someone would walk in with a suitcase full of cash and they, it would be theirs. <laughs> and and uh, then our friends actually kind of, we initially thought they were joking, we're like, we could build a house in our backyard. <laughs> and um, we realized they were serious. And so we worked for the past two years on building a backyard cottage. The real benefits to having these kind of housing options mean that there's more places for small families, more places for, uh, for people that are retiring, more places for you know, young single folks, um, all to take advantage of the neighborhoods that we've already built. It's allowed us to live in a walkable, transit-oriented and bike-oriented neighborhood. One of the biggest drivers for climate change is just the carbon that we, we spew into the atmosphere while we're waiting in traffic. And by providing more houses or more homes for, for people to live inside the city, in places that are already developed, we are saving not only the, um, the land that may be you know, currently farmland, it may be forest, we're saving that from development, but we're also then saving every day that trip to and from the job to school, all that, because we're putting people where, uh, where we've already established you know, Park schools, great neighborhoods, restaurants, all that stuff. Well, we're a car-free family. Uh, we primarily bike and walk and take transit to get around. Right now, there are a lot of rules that dictate uh, how and how big and where and uh, backyard cottages and, and mother-in-law apartments can be built. It was actually really hard to find someone who, would, who could build it, but we eventually found a good team that likes working on small, eco-friendly spaces. But then when we actually went to get it approved, the system was really backed up and, and really kind of unfriendly. Each step of the permit process took significantly longer than we thought it would. So rules that are written for space is much larger than a backyard house, but you still have to go through like every step and it still takes as long. One of the things that is, uh, is currently a requirement is to provide parking for, uh, for backyard cottages and accessory dwelling units. But what we find is that the people that, that are living in backyard cottages and accessory dwelling units uh, oftentimes uh, don't even have a car. So one of the design considerations that we had to make that was a pretty big compromise was making Fiona's room really small. Um, her bedroom fits a twin bed and a dresser and there's not much room for much else. So I think she, she's definitely the one who's gonna grow up wondering why her bedroom's so small. We're gonna say it's because of car parking requirements, honey. Um, so it really allows um, a broader segment of the population and all the newcomers to have places that, that they can come into the neighborhood of their choice, especially if we allow these, these uh, places to be built inside the city. We're just really invested in staying in, in Wallingford and making it a really welcoming community. Uh, we're, we're really happy to have good neighbors who are excited and also inspired a little bit to build their own backyard cottages.